This episode is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. What is going on, freaks and geeks? My name is John Solo, and today on Mythology Explained, we're talking about this guy. His name is Atlas, and he's the titan responsible for making sure the heavens don't come crashing down on us. Thanks, big guy. Whether you know him by name or not, there is no doubt you've seen a portrayal of Atlas at some point in your life, probably in a stance just like this, either holding the earth or another giant ball of some kind. But despite his status as an icon, not many people know Atlas's full story. They aren't aware of the fact that he had children, that this was a punishment handed down by Zeus himself, and that him holding up the earth is actually a common misconception. And it's for that reason that today I'm shedding some light on our boy Atlas, who he was, how he got stuck with this shitty job, and his run-ins with two of Greek mythology's most famous heroes, Heracles and Perseus. In other words, I've got some real fascinating shit coming your way. Before we jump into it though, I've got to say thanks to this week's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. I would be very surprised if you hadn't heard of Raid Shadow Legends because it has been absolutely blowing up over the past few months. People all around the world are playing it, and there's good reason for it. Raid is a badass turn-based fantasy RPG where you can recruit champions, upgrade them from zero to hero, and fight hordes of powerful monsters to save the world. It's got HD graphics, a full-length campaign with a great story, epic boss battles for you to test your skills against, and even a PvP mode. It really pushes the boundaries of what mobile games can do. As of right now, there's over 400 champions from different factions for you to assemble your squad with, and every single model was made with an incredible attention to detail. Seriously, every time I unlocked a new hero, I was blown away by how cool and unique they Look. Then my mind was blown all over again when I went to the champion index and saw the massive roster. An added bonus, the daily login rewards program for new players has been doubled from 90 to 180 days. Each day you can claim your free rewards from energy refills, silver and gems to shards, and a free barbarian legendary champion, Sill of the Drake. If you want to join in on all this action, which I can't recommend enough, just head to my link in the description. If you're a new player, you'll get 100,000 silver and a free epic champion, Light Sworn, to help you start your journey off right. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. Then after you're done with the tutorial, make sure to add me by searching Captain John Solo, and if you're fast enough, maybe you can join my clan. And we're back, so let's get started. Out of respect for Atlas, I gotta ask you to lift that like button up on your shoulders. Just make sure to lift with your legs, subscribe if you haven't already, and most importantly, enjoy. So as usual, I wanted to start this off by answering the most simple of questions, then slowly easing our way into the madness that we usually find in Greco-Roman mythology. The problem with that is that in true mythological fashion, even the most basic of questions like who is Atlas have complicated answers. Because in the vast majority of portrayals, Atlas was a titan who personified endurance, but there are a few renditions that say otherwise. For right now though, let's focus on his titanic form and the also complex questions of where he came from and who his parents are. Because depending on which of the Greek poets you asked, you would most most likely get a different answer. Apollodorus says his mother was an ocean nymph or oceanid who was named Asia. Another poet, Hyginus, claims his father was Aether, a primordial deity who personified the heavenly air the gods breathed, and Gaia, the personification of the earth. And yet another poet, our old friend Hesiod, said he's the son of Iapetus, another titan who was also Cronus's brother, and his mother was Clymene, an oceanid. These two seem to be the most widely accepted as his parents. This also makes him the brother of the two titans we talked about last episode, Prometheus and Epimetheus, as well as Menetius. He also has a ton of kids. There's the Pleiades, also known as the Seven Heavenly Sisters, the Hyades, nymphs that bring rain, and the Hesperides, the nymphs of the evening and the golden light of sunsets. He also has a son, Hyas, who was a hunter and wound up being killed by his potential prey, either a lion, serpent, or wild boar. Atlas was more than a titanic baby-making machine, though. He was also extremely intelligent. Legend says that he studied the constellations and knew even the deepest parts of the ocean. He passed that knowledge on to humans, too. He introduced us to astronomy, which was used by sailors for navigation and farmers for measuring the seasons. There's an alternate version where, instead of a titan, Atlas is actually a wise human king who taught all of his subjects this information, and as a result, there's a theory that the stars and heavens resting on his shoulders was originally meant figuratively, as in he was the only one who understood them. I thought that was an interesting interpretation, but the titan version is still my favorite. Speaking of, it's about time for me to explain how he wound up literally holding the heavens on his shoulders, and once again, there's more than one version of this too. To put it simply, it was a punishment by Zeus for Atlas leading an attack on Olympus with some of the other titans. But it's the context for the attack that changes depending on where you get your information. Most sources claim that Atlas was punished for fighting against the Olympians in the Titanomachy, an event we learned about in my episode about the creation of the universe according to the ancient Greeks. This was the golden age ending conflict that led to the Olympians like Zeus, Hera, Poseidon, etc. taking over Mount Olympus and therefore ruling the universe. But other sources claim that it was another attack, one orchestrated by Hera, that landed Atlas the worst job in the universe. 
Mars. They say that she set the Titans free from Tartarus, where they were imprisoned after the Titanomachy, and told them to overthrow Zeus so his father Kronos could be king once again. Fortunately though, Zeus was on Olympus at this time, so he and his fellow gods were ready to fend the Titans off. In this version, Zeus never found out that Hera was behind the attack, which allowed her to orchestrate the one with the Olympians at her side that we learned about in my video about the Queen. Whichever rendition you choose to believe though, it doesn't really matter because in the end, the only real difference is whether or not Atlas served any time in Tartarus. Now when it came to the rest of the Titans, Zeus just tossed them into the underworld where they belonged, but he had special plans for Atlas, who was at the forefront of the attack. Because he tried taking over the heavens, he was now the sole one responsible for supporting them, and he had to do it on his own two shoulders forever. He essentially became the embodiment of the celestial axis that the stars and heavens revolve around. Now note that I said the heavens and not the earth. That's a misconception you see all over the place, largely because of statues that show Atlas in this position, holding some kind of colorless orb that many assume is the earth, because what else would it be? But the actual answer is a celestial sphere. Its technical definition is very complicated, but you can think of it as sort of an abstract representation of our universe. Even that is an artistic interpretation though. Atlas wasn't necessarily holding a perfect sphere on his back, he was holding the entirety of the heavens. So from our perspective, the sky. That's why portrayals like this are my favorite. To me, they're the most accurate as they show him supporting the night sky and stars above. And he's placed at the farthest end of the earth where he was originally believed to have been located. Now at this point, Atlas may have been punished but the myths about him aren't over just yet. There's a few legends involving him and some of ancient Greece's most iconic heroes that I know you're gonna love, so stay right there while I go make some hot dogs during this ad break. Mmm. I swear to God, I don't even care if these have raccoon in them. I love hot dogs. Putting delicious snacks aside for now though, let's talk about Atlas's encounters with ancient Greece's greatest, starting with Perseus because chronologically, theirs did happen first. Now once again, there's about 10,000 different versions of this myth, so it can be a little confusing, but similar to the fables that we talk about on this channel, the same basic events happen in all of them. It's just the details that change. So in the first telling, Atlas is the same Titan that we all know and love, and Perseus runs into him during his post-Medusa slaying adventure. Perseus declares himself the son of Zeus and asks Atlas for some shelter, but the Titan remembers a prophecy about a son of Zeus stealing Hera's golden apples, which were guarded by his daughters, the Hesperides. We all know that prophecy is actually about Heracles, but Atlas didn't, and not wanting to invite any trouble into his family's lives, he told Perseus to kick rocks, but the young hero didn't appreciate that, so he used Medusa's head to turn Atlas to stone. Only because the Titan was so huge, he didn't just turn to stone, he turned into a mountain. His hair and beard became forests, his shoulders were cliffs, and his hands ridges. Now these next two versions have the same exact ending, but the circumstances are a little different because in that first one, Atlas was already being punished by Zeus when he met Perseus. In this next one though, Atlas is not a Titan. His father is still Iapetus, but he's just a giant shepherd man. Once again, Perseus runs into him post Medusa. He declares his lineage and asks for shelter, but this time Atlas remembers a prophecy about the son of Zeus stealing his golden apples. That's right, they're his this time, not Hera's. Well, Atlas says no, so Perseus gets mad and turns him into stone and Atlas becomes a mountain that the stars and heavens rest on. Yeah, in this timeline, that's how he ends up supporting the sky. Not because of an epic conflict between Titans and gods, but because he told Perseus he couldn't sleep over. Needless to say, I'm not a big fan of this one. And the third version is basically the same thing, except instead of a shepherd, Atlas is the wise king I mentioned earlier who taught his people about astronomy and naval navigation. Regardless of which version you personally choose to believe, there is one thing that remains consistent. That each of these stories exists as an origin for the real life Atlas mountain range in Morocco, so that's pretty cool. Now let's talk about Heracles, Mr. Zero to Hero himself, the apple thief of Atlas's nightmares. We already went over their encounter in my video about the 12 labors of Heracles, but today I've got time to go into a little more detail. Isn't that exciting? For those unaware, Heracles had to complete 12 labors for King Eurystheus to repent for the sins of murdering his wife Megara and his kids. In actuality, he only murdered them because Hera cursed him with madness, but he doesn't know that. He also doesn't know that Eurystheus is working for Hera. For the 11th labor, Heracles was ordered to retrieve three of Hera's golden apples from the Garden of Hesperides, and then addition to being guarded by the Hesperides, there was also an immortal, never sleeping, hundred headed dragon called the Ladon there is backup. Fortunately, at this point, Heracles had already freed Prometheus from his punishment of having his liver eaten by an eagle every day, so the wise titan gave him some advice. Hey Heracles, the Hesperides are my nieces. I say you go to their father, my brother Atlas, and offer to cover his shift while he goes into the garden and gets the apples for you. In other words, because Atlas didn't have to worry about his daughters attacking him, he'd only have to worry about the dragon and the task would 
would be significantly safer for him. Now, normally I try to avoid making assumptions about this stuff because I don't want to unintentionally give out misinformation, but I'm going to be bold and make two whole assumptions about this myth. First off, I have to assume this happens in a different timeline than the previously mentioned interaction with Perseus because Atlas would be a mountain now, but also that in this timeline, Atlas must never have heard about a prophecy where the son of Zeus would steal Hera's apples because I don't think he would help him if he did. There is a plot twist though. When Atlas returned with the apples, he said he didn't want to hold up the heavens anymore and that he would deliver the apples to the king himself. Obviously, Heracles didn't want that to happen, but he didn't panic. He knew Atlas had no foresight and would be extremely easy to trick. He simply told the Titan that he'd be fine holding the heavens a while longer, but asked if Atlas could take them for just a minute while he put a cushion on his back. Atlas agreed, then as soon as he was freed, Heracles dipped out. But there is an epilogue to this myth. Being that he did help him, Heracles didn't want to leave Atlas high and dry, so after he finished his labors, he built two pillars, which are now referred to as the Pillars of Heracles, to hold up the heavens in his place. I really like this part of the story too, because as I said a minute ago, in addition to freeing Atlas, Heracles also freed his brother Prometheus from his punishment. Homie is like Greek mythology's equivalent of a superhero. He just goes around killing people who are assholes and doing good deeds for the folks who help him on his journey, even if that means undoing the will of the gods. And honestly, who better to do that than Zeus's very own son? It's such an awesome story. Anyway, that is only one version of how Heracles got the apple. Some say he just went to the garden, killed the dragon himself, and bounced. So fuck everything I just said, I guess. Wouldn't it have been weird if I ended the video like that? I do think that would have been great actually, but I still gotta do all my self promo shit because I'm a YouTuber and my livelihood is built on a foundation of sand. So on that note, if you wanna support me and what I do here on the channel, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and share this video with a fellow Greek geek. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on Atlas and the rest of the insanity that is Greek mythology, so leave a comment down below. Links to my Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram are in the description, so follow me on all those or else I'm gonna follow you in real life. And this weird thing that lives in my apartment also has an Instagram he wanted me to tell you about, so go follow him too. I'll be seeing you guys very soon with even more messed up and mythological content. Until that day comes, my name is John Solo, and remember, John shot first.